In this video, I'm going to discuss how to decide whether you should sell your NFT. Should you even sell it at all? And also, when should you sell your NFT? How should you analyze whether you should sell it? And what price should you actually sell the NFT at? I'm going to discuss that in this video. So an off the cuff video, we're going to jump live onto IC.tools and look at whichever collection is trending. And I'm going to use that one basically as an example. Also, thank you so much for your comments and I appreciate the support with regards to my NFT videos. If you're enjoying them, please comment below. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. I'm going to be talking about some massive NFT collections that I'll be investing in in January. And I only now stay close to the better quality ones, the ones where it doesn't necessarily have to be a high price, but there's good utility there and there's good potential and they're not overly hyped because the overly hyped ones, they always just pump and dump, sometimes pre-reveal, sometimes post-reveal. And usually nowadays I can tell, not with 100% accuracy, but 80, 90% or so what's going to happen. But anyway, let's get to the video. So on here, I'm gonna first have a look at what's trending at the moment. Now, Little Lemon Friends, this is something I invested in a while ago and it's pumping again in terms of the volume as you can see there and you can see the floor price there and the average. But what I like to do first of all, is I like to look at the trend, the overall trend before we get onto OpenSea. So if I click into this, and what I like to do is as long as time frame as is available. Now in terms of all of these blue spots you can see here, these are all transactions, minus the outliers, which are the really big transactions. And on this chart, it goes back 30 days maximum, unfortunately. I can't get IC tools to do more than that, but on this particular line chart, you can go back 90 days. So you can see from time of minting and the kind of uh, a reveal, you can see exactly what's happened since then. And you can see very, very recently, massive volume. Now that is interesting. When you have any collection, I'm personally slightly staying away from longer term plays, but in any now longer term collection, when you see the initial reveal, uh, sorry, the minting, public sale, reveal, and then volume dies down as expected. The floor price can drift downwards, but then if you see any massive new volume come in, that's a telltale sign that there's something going on. Either a whale is buying a lot of the NFTs off floor, all the rarer ones, or there's some news, something's happened, somebody's tweeted about it or something. Be careful with those pumps. They can sometimes only last a day or two and then die off, or it can be a significant shift and change for this entire collection that will move it up. And if you can pick it up quickly, this is why I like the trending tab on uh, IC.tools here, this trending tab, because I can quickly pick up on that. That doesn't mean you don't do your research. Don't just quickly go and buy an NFT just because the price seems to be going up. I've made that mistake before. Don't, don't do the FOMO thing, so be careful with that. Now, let's say you had one of these NFTs. What price should you sell at? To make that decision, what I like to do is first check the chart as I've shown, but check it on a smaller time frame. So this is a 30 day, I wanna drop down to a four hourly and then one hourly, so let's do that now. So if I click on a four hourly here, I wanna see the, the mean transactions, what's been going on? And you can see here very, very clearly, from just a few hours ago, the floor price was just 0.15. So if I bought the floor, the cheapest one available, I could easily sell it now for 0.1 profit, which is still not bad. So the floor price is going up, that's fine. So that's good, nice to see that trend. What about the last hour though? Is it kind of calming down? You can see the last hour, still going up a little bit, but calming down slightly. But also at the same time, it hasn't suddenly crashed either. So we can keep an eye on that too. Now, if we look here and we do a one day history, which is the smallest we can go, you can see with the green line there, what's happened with price. We saw the pump up to 0.24 average, then it's calmed down and then it's kind of pumping back up again. We've seen some volume going back in there. So on OpenSea, what I would wanna do, you can actually just click through from here. So if you click on the OpenSea link, it will open the collection there. And you can see confirm floor price 0.27. This isn't always accurate, this floor price, so be careful. Because sometimes if I go and buy now here, and I try and buy the first one, it's sometimes not available, you see that? So as I was expecting, it's, I can't even buy it because OpenSea is so slow when it comes to updating everything, especially this buy now chart. So the cheapest one's actually 0.28. Now, I know this is a, a video about <laughs> where to sell, but in an uptrending market like this, you don't want to sell. That's, that's my next point. Because it's uptrending, this could carry on for a while. So you could quickly sell at 0.27, but you don't know if this is gonna move up and the floor price tomorrow will be 0.47. So the take home first, one of the first take home messages is as things are trending upwards, 
wait. Don't rush to sell yet. Yes, you want to sell into the hype a little bit, but just be a little bit more patient. Yes, if it pulls back down, you might lose 0.02, but let's see how high it goes first because the price is still trending upwards from here. We had that bit of a spike before, but now it's picking up again. And look at the volume uh, on there, on these final bars here. It's actually a lot higher than the volume we had right throughout this collection. So massive volume is coming in. So potentially it could keep moving up. The next thing I wanna look at along with the buy now is click on activity tab. Here, by the way, if you don't have IC.tools, you can see the trend again anyway that I've just been describing to you in terms of the average price picking back up. But also you can see the sales and you can see that every minute there's about eight or nine sales. So the volume of sales is high and also some of the rare ones are selling for higher. So if you have a rarer one, you can actually find something comparable here. There are a few ways to do it. One way is, so let's say you were selling one similar to this. Whichever one you're selling, go into the properties tab and find what the rarest thing is you have in here, in these boxes. Click on that. So the rarest in here is the black background. Now, if I click on buy now here, I can see that the cheapest one with the black background is selling for 0.94. So that's the cheapest one. So you don't want to go in and sell for 0.3 or 0.4. You want to price it at 0.92 or 0.90. And yours is most likely to sell because it's the cheapest with the black background. Because you do want to make the sale as well but also you want to get a fair price. And if that's your rarest trait, that's the one you should be using to give you an idea of what the market value is. Now, always when you're listing anyway, let's say your idea, you think maybe you'll sell for 0.9, maybe 0.8. You, there's no harm in listing it for 1.2 or 1.1 and just waiting 15 to 20 minutes to see what happens. It's very easy to lower your price. So let's say if I was selling this one, it's easy for me to lower the price once it's selling, but, um, on OpenSea, it doesn't let you increase the price. You have to cancel the listing, which involves charges and delays. So it's better to just price it higher and then slowly reduce your price. But more on that in just a minute. By the way, don't forget, if you're liking the video, please hit the like button. It really helps me out here on YouTube in terms of YouTube's algorithm. So the next tip I have for you is to check the floor. So what do I mean by that? Let's go back to the, the front page. And what I want to look on here is I'm going to go and buy now. So let's say you just have any random non-rare one. So any one that's not in the top, let's say, how, how many in this collection? 10,000. So nothing in the top kind of two or 3,000. You don't have one very, very rare trait. It's just a bog standard one. You just want to get rid of it um, whilst the price is pumping. The other thing to check is the floor thickness. So you can see this is for 0.27 and we checked already and I think this one was not available. But then how many are selling at 0.28? If there's 20 selling at 0.28, then sell for 0.27. But if you're only seeing one or two, and then suddenly the price jumps to 0.3 or 0.4 or 0.5, wait a little bit, because very likely after those one or two are sold, the new floor price is gonna be 0.3 anyway. So you might as well list a lot higher. But here you can see there's a lot of resistance. Look how many are listing for 0.3. So what that means is if somebody's just buying the floor, it's gonna take forever for the floor price to go higher. So in my opinion, the price for Little Lemon might not push quickly through 0.3. It just depends on the activity. We, yes, we are seeing a lot of sales, but it might take a little bit of time. But then once those 0.3s are cleared out, then we're into the 0 0.32, 0 0.325. Now, this is assuming no new people are listing at floor price, which we don't know uh, is true. But again, one little trick to check is go onto the activity tab, and this time rather than sales, click on listings and sales. So I can see that all of these are sales. So after we've had about three, seven sales, we've only had uh, one listing come up. And you can see here, four sales, one listing. Very, very strong indication of a trending market that could be pushing up further. You can see all of these, uh, a few more listings here, but then a sale, only one listing, and then a few sales. In fact, I'm actually, I was invested in these and then I sold them, uh, I think a week or two back. I had two or three of these rarish ones, but, I'm actually considering, I don't own any at the moment, but actually just looking at this whilst I'm doing the video, I'm considering possibly buying a floor one and just holding it to see if I can sell into this because it's moving so fast. But again, you can see here now a few more listings coming, but not a floor price. A lot of these listings are much higher, which means people are still buying at the floor price. So you can see here, 0 0.31, 0 0.3, 0 0.29, 0 0.3. These are all purchases at the floor price. People are buying, assuming the, uh, the uh, price would actually go up. Another tip I have for you, so let's say you're selling one of these, let's say this one for 2.5. So this person's selling for 
how you price, I, this is my personal opinion, from my experience with other businesses not related to NFTs, is the way you actually price is important. We're human beings. That's why for many years the 99 pence or 97 pence works better than the one pound or one dollar. So just have a little think about how you're actually writing down the price. So rather than 2.5, how about 2.495 or 2.475? Instead of two, how about 1.97, 1.95? Do you see what I mean there? Just taking, making it looking, look a little bit better for a buyer, making them think they're getting a little bit more of a deal. I know it's a small thing, but these little things can make a big difference, especially if you're looking to sell quickly your particular NFT. Now, this is a good, nice trend in market, but I wanna show you another example. What if you've got an NFT that's not doing very well and you just wanna get rid of it? How do you actually sell it then? Well, let's just use another example. So let's go back to trending and just see if there's anything that was perhaps not doing that well right now. So let's have a look. Another one I was involved in, I don't think it's here, but I'll use it as an example because it's one of those that just pumped a little bit. It's, it's another derivative one, which, which I never like, but I still make money on them because again, I do a lot of the trading before the reveal. So this one I did all right on. I think overall I had about four or five of them. Overall, I think I made about 0.5 profit, something like that. But let me go on to a longer term time frame. Uh, and I don't own any of these at the moment. But yeah, so basically what I was doing with this one, same strategy as I've discussed on the channel, I was buying around here and then selling here because I could see it wasn't pushing over 0.35. So I sold all of mine because I knew on reveal it would dump because it's a derivative, no particular nice use case. The artwork wasn't particularly good either. And it, it did dump post reveal. Now, I don't know if it's gonna pick up again. Maybe new volume will come or something new and interesting will come. I have no idea. But let's say you own one of these, maybe pre-reveal or you have one now, you think it's a bit rare. How do you sell it? How do you get rid of it? Well, again, do the same thing. Get onto the smallest time frame because you, you wanna know what's been happening recently. One thing you note here, the volume, very, very low, literally handful of sales per hour, which is not great so soon after reveal. But what's the floor? The lowest people are selling for is about 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Are there any massive sales going through? You might think, well, mine is the rarest one ever. Um, in the last hour, 0.25 is the highest. So nobody's buying any rare ones. In the last four hours, yes, somebody did pay 1.4. But apart from that, they're all low sales. So not that much interest in the ape dad. Now let's have a look at the actual collection. And again, I'm using the same techniques as before. Even though I wanna get rid of it fast, I just wanna have a look at the floor. I wanna see, is the first one actually available? This one possibly could be because nobody's interested in this collection. Yes, it is. In a fast moving collection that people care about, this first one's never usually available. It's always usually sold. This one's available and it's not shifting. Um, in fact, another way to check is if you go down and you click on listings, just see uh, this person hasn't, but sometimes you see people reducing their price aggressively. This is what you will do. This is one of the techniques. Then you see 0.117, three up 0.18, and then we go to 0.12, and there's a lot at 0.12, there's a lot of resistance. And to be honest, with these things, you don't wanna waste a lot of time either because the price could drop further in another day. So if it was me, I would take the hit of another 0.01 ether and quickly price it at 0.105 and just be done with it. Because the thing about NFTs, you have to understand is, you'll make some gains. Sometimes you'll get lucky, sometimes you'll do some really good trades, but if you can minimize your losses, then you'll stay in this for the long term and you make a lot of money. And I learned that, especially at the beginning. I was making some big gains, but I had one or two big losses as well. But then when I minimized my gains, when I quickly just chopped out losers, it helped my account massively. And now any time in my collection, I'm only holding a handful of stuff I'm trading for that week. I'm not interested in the long term. I'm considering opening a second wallet where I hold things that I think in three or four months will do well, but I'm not that interested to be honest with you because the little one ETH I can make from that, I can make it quickly on some collections right now that are pumping because it's the volume that makes money. So if we uh, zoom out a little bit, it's the volume here at the beginning that makes all the money here initially and after the reveal. So you can see these high volume spikes. When the volume's dead like this, it's very, very hard to buy and sell and flip and make any money at all. Much easier with volume. That is actually why a lot of people, especially experienced NFT flippers, they move from one collection to the other like I've been doing because it's just easier and better 
There's always liquidity, always people for you to sell to in a pump, like Little Lemon, as you can see right now, there's plenty of people buying. If you need to sell quite fast, it, let's say you had a rare one, this is how I would play it. So let's say yours is a little bit rarer. So let's scroll down and let's just assume one of these that are selling for a higher price is a bit rarer. And you can see here on properties again, um, well, none of these are that rare, but let's say it's the, the one with the cigar. So it's 2% rarity. I'd quickly just check and see what's the cheapest one in that particular uh, trait. And then I would look to undercut that one. So I would sell it for 0.15 and just leave that there for an hour or two. And let's just see what happens with that. But if it's not working, the way to do it is once you're selling, aggressively reduce your price. Every half an hour, hour, reduce it by 0 0.1, uh, sorry, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, until you get a sale. And you have to do that because so many of these, after the pump, they just slowly trend towards zero unless something dramatic happens. There's some massive utility that they didn't mention before. Some famous YouTuber or uh, just general person tweets about it on Twitter, but then you're relying on luck. And many times, uh, many times when I first started, I was waiting for reveals where I knew I'd paid overpaid. And you probably, some of you watching have probably done this before where you're relying on luck then. You're hoping you'll get a rare so you can make back your money. Now, if you're hoping to get lucky, you've already know you've done a bad trade and better, you should just cut your losses and run. For example, here, if you bought in at 0.35 and it was coming to reveal and you're like, well, the price is low, I might as well hold on now. The best thing to do is actually to sell for 0.29 before reveal and move on. And then during the reveal, if you find anything cheap and you wanna flip it, you can go ahead and try or you can just leave it completely. So I hope those tips help. Remember with all of these trades, you need to be emotionally detached completely. If you absolutely must sell something, get on with it. Sell it for lower than floor price and just leave it. Don't look at it again, move on to another collection because you don't know if you're in your next collection, you're gonna make one, two, three ether. So what do you care about 0 0.01 here and there? It's just a waste of time. That's my advice anyway. Let me know in the comments what you think and I look forward to another video very soon. Thanks for listening.